What a great pleasure it is to welcome Peter Kerr, who is the founder and director of Argon Supply Chain Services, a syntax company. Um, good morning to you, Peter. How are you doing? Morning, Aki. Very well, and uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Yeah, that's great, man. And uh, listen, before we start, tell us a little bit about Argon Supply Chain Services. Uh, what do you guys do? Yeah, so we're a, we quite a long time ago, almost 15, 16 years ago now, we decided to specifically focus on the logistics area in what SAP offers as an application suite. So we saw a pretty big gap in the market when it came to skills in this area, as well as industrial knowledge. And we thought, well, that'll be a great area to start covering and getting involved in. And it's grown from strength to strength. You know, we've done, um, we focus primarily on the warehousing environment and transport planning environments. So it's actually worked very well for us. Um, and by staying focused, we've been able to offer really specific services to customers. Fantastic. And, and I'm sure that in, in all of this time since you started your company, you've seen many changes happening in supply chain management and warehousing. And, you know, we've seen how, you know, supply chains have been disrupted with COVID, for example, and how, um, you know, online uh, buying and, and uh, you know, e-commerce has really revolutionized many uh, services and how we how we interact with companies, et cetera, et cetera. So you obviously primarily look at how retailers can optimize and you know in, you know increase their efficiency. So let me start off by asking you how how do retailers how can retailers maximize the potential of SAP S4 HANA cloud specifically to streamline operations and improve efficiencies because we all know it's happening up there in the cloud. Yeah, yeah, I'm so far away it seems. But um, what, 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 what's happened is you're right. The technology and the environment has absolutely revolutionized. So things have changed. The landscape has totally changed. And a big aspect that's come about from compared to the 90s and even early 20s is that this whole um, business uh, requirements and specific business services have fallen away into more commodity-based processes. So what SAP saw was that if they could rather let customers take commodity processes in S4 HANA, and these processes would be normal warehouse receiving or normal warehouse issuing, and allowing the customers to rather focus on areas that they can become different and show themselves out as, as, as leaders in the environments, SAP moved all of those specific customer requirements more to commodity-based. And using, using S4 HANA with automation, they able to allow customers to use the technology rather as a tool than as a hindrance. Um, I think if you talk to any CFO nowadays, they would obviously, you know, the IT department was always a major, a major cost center, whereas using these commodity processes and cloud-based technology, a lot of it is off the shelf to say available for the business nowadays. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, interesting times indeed. <laughs> when you look at how technology is evolving, and and of course with AI, I think it's also um, adding even more efficiencies and you know perhaps even complexities to some organisations if it's not applied properly. But you talk about SAP being the the X factor retail. Can, can you expand on that for us, please? Sure. So so in the past, if you had a look at best of breed software. Uh, SAP might not have been the best in warehousing or, or the best in transportation management. But now what they've done is they've really moved into that best of breed curve. So they're actually able to offer the best way of what picking inside a warehouse, receiving inside a warehouse, inside their suite of products. So they've moved from best of breed to best of suite. That means um, the, power, the power of being able to use one software platform across the whole supply chain allows the customer to have a lot of versatility. So before, before, if you wanted to, and this is specifically true about retail, retailers had to go from being able to move large pallets out of a warehouse right down to moving eaches to uh, forecourt stores inside petrol stations, all out of the same big warehouse facility. Now, if SAP wasn't able to accommodate those kind of warehouse processes where they could quickly allow the customer to choose, today I'm picking 30 big pallets and tomorrow I'm picking 30 small eaters of cigarettes or something like that, that the software must be able to adjust to that. So 
The X factor we're talking about is to be able to quickly adjust to the supply chain demand using the software that you've invested in and trusting in that software to do its job. Um, the, I think the biggest area that we're seeing it is the way customers are using it in where they have warehouses that are totally manually operated and then they might have a warehouse that has to pick much smaller quantities um, over longer periods of time and then they have a warehouse that has to be totally automated. So what SAP uh, S4HANA and specifically the embedded version in the cloud has done is they're actually able to connect to all those different processes and quickly enable them. So back to my original point of making a, commodity, a process more of a commodity or automated process, we don't want to spend months in this environment. We can't spend months trying to deliver solutions to the business for them to adapt to a very fast changing supply chain environment. We must be able to do this in weeks, if not days, to be able to quickly add a new process, pick small quantities, large quantities, and SAP allows us to do that very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like it's all about streamlining efficiencies and, and uh, operations and, uh, and really optimizing how we do things. And when you look at omnichannel specifically, it, it still remains a key topic for retailers. How does having SAP supply chain as part of your S4 HANA cloud implementation, why is that so important? Yeah. So... If, if a business is not looking at an online version of itself, um, an online supply chain, being able to order from home, order from apps on the cell phone, being able to order in any environment from any location, um, they're going to be left behind. Everybody has to have some type of online capability or online presence and be able to deliver services or products online. So the SAP, and uh, back to the point of being able to be very versatile, has to be able to very quickly present products online, allow customers to show their, uh, their product suite online with cataloging software in the same suite of products. And it has to be able to execute those orders <clears throat> very quickly. So, so online orders would have a different profile to a normal truck delivery or a store delivery. They would need to be delivered a lot faster so they'll have a different priority. They need to be handled by a different area of the business. And they also need to be able to have visibility. The customers want to know where the stock is. The real, the real aspect with online business is actually not so much the forward process. It's actually the reversal. People love buying online if they can return stock easily. So the returns process actually needs a lot more focus than the forward process to, be, to, be, to gain trust with customers and so that the platform gets used more. So SAP S4, on, HANA, has actually developed a lot of reversal processes, easy to use, return or reverse logistic processes so that we can quickly get back the product that we sent out at a low cost and then resend a new order that same day. Okay. Yeah, and, and, uh, and you know, it's so interesting that uh, many online retailers often, um, you know, th they don't see the importance of those returns and those returns lend up uh, you know, costing you a lot of money in the long run if you don't do it properly. And it's all about customer experience. You get that wrong and it can impact your entire brand. Now, we know that vendors play a critical role in retail, as you've also just mentioned. How does SAP improve vendor compliance and how does this translate into efficiencies and, and I guess, better retail practice in the long run? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think gone are the days where we see our business as a, a standalone um, environment that we've got full control over. I think the COVID epidemic and, and the times we had where we had supply chains actually stop, we realized that we've got to work much more closely with our vendors and our customers. So by integrating with vendors and allowing them to rather do a lot of work upstream for us, for example, so they could pack pallets, they could pre-label pallets and get orders ready for delivery for us, and we would, be, we would act as an intermediary as a business using SAP, be able to receive that stock, sometimes not even store it, just cross dock that stock on a truck and immediately send it out because it's already labeled, it's already got our branding on it. So what SAP has done is they've, they've got the, uh, the technology to allow vendors to connect via the logistics business network. And this allows vendors to collaborate and integrate with the logistics areas of the SAP suite a lot more easily. We can actually book slots for trucks. We know when a truck is going to arrive. 
We know how long the truck is going to be at the warehouse and we know what stock they're going to deliver. We don't even need to relabel that stock. We can use the labels that is on the stock because the vendor and ourselves are collaborating through SAP to make sure that the physical process or the manual processes are as minimal as possible, which makes it a lot smoother um, and as far as the supply chain goes. We really want to don't, we don't want to touch stock as much as, as possible. We want to move it through our system as quickly as possible. And we also want to be able to move it differently. Uh, if a shipping lane is closed or if a train line is closed, we want to be able to quickly change that medium of transport to trucking or something else without totally upsetting the, the delivery time schedules and, and the, the customers. So uh, using SAP, the logistics area, it's able to quickly decide on a new route or a new medium of transport, negotiate with vendors the best price to deliver stock and actually have vendors collaborate and, and, and quote, if you want to call it, or tender for deliveries and then immediately execute the delivery. So the main thing is that integration, that vendor visibility and integration just makes our lives as a business a lot smoother and it actually the, the customer wins at the end of the day. Yeah, makes makes perfect sense. I mean, if we look ahead into the future, we know that, you know, that cloud is, you know, part of the future of that roadmap. Uh, we touched on AI, for example. So when you look at S4 HANA Cloud, I mean, that is the future for all ro roadmap innovation by SAP. We've heard the story over and over again. How are you seeing... Um, the automation and AI featuring in supply chain today? Because I guess that it is making a massive impact and you simply cannot ignore it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think th there's so many areas. It's such a big subject to actually look at. And, in, and inside logistics, you can imagine if you take a transport network or a warehouse, there are millions of data points that we could use as information. So AI could be used in so many different contexts. It could be used in inside the four walls of the warehouse just to optimize a picking path or the way we take stock and inventory management, or it could be used outside of the warehouse in optimizing the transport routes and also getting different models back from transport to find out what really is a, that hidden extra um, efficiency that we want to pull out of the supply chain. AI can work with that. I think automation doesn't just mean AI. So, so, so we, for example, we're using AI in a lot of instances to automate support. Um, if, if there's a common problem with the system or a common question the business keep asking, then we would let AI deal with that problem because it's actually seen the problem before and it's able to resolve that problem. So even from the serving, um, the, the, the management of the system, it's also able to play a role. In the, in the customer, the retailer using S4 HANA in the cloud the sky is limitless. Uh, there's so much that they could do with AI. The most important thing to do is to make sure that the SAP is able to support it. It's able to plug into the right data points and use the data, the data models, and that whoever's busy implementing it is able to do that correctly and have the knowledge of how to do it. Because I don't think the technology is the limit. I think it's how to do, how to implement the, te the technology that is really the limit. Um, so I think that the, 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 the areas that we're also using automation in is, is actually uh, physical automation, robotics, uh, inside a warehouse, automating storage. Those systems don't, don't any longer need to be implemented with middleware or anything. SAP, S4 HANA in the cloud is able to connect to those automated systems directly and talk to robots directly or talk to conveyor belts directly and uh, use the automation directly, whereas saving a lot of middleware licensing. And as we all know, the more software points and interface points involved, the more problems we normally have. So reducing the number of integration points and leveraging automation into S4 HANA Cloud is, um, is a real powerful offering. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely fascinating when you look at how today the evolution is happening has happened in the ecosystem where you know, everything is talking to each other from the robots to the, uh, you know, the warehouse to the uh, ship that might be delayed. I mean, it's all one big ecosystem that's all talking together and really giving you those incredible insights at the end of the day. Absolutely fascinating. Peter Kerr, who is the founder and director of Argon Supply Chain Services, which is a syntax company. Peter, thank you so much for your time and for joining us for this episode of What's Next. Thank you, Aki. I really enjoyed being on the show.